Hello, my friends. I miss you. I will be back on Monday, um, but we're going to continue on with this periodic trends unit. I will, I promise, review all of this when I get back, but I would like you to keep trying and going through the questions I have for you um, after you watch this video and make sure to fill in any missing pieces in your notes. Um, I would like you to go to the Castle Learning I have for you. Um, it will be labeled Periodic Trends. And then once you finish that and make note of any questions you're getting incorrect, I would like you to go over to the Periodic Trends worksheet that I have for you. It is lengthy. Um, it will serve as a great review for just how the periodic table is set up. So things like groups and periods and then also valence electrons. And then it touches on these periodic trends. And you're going to complete it on Cami and turn it in when you're done. Again, you know you are more than welcome to resubmit anything you do. So I know I'm not there to answer your questions, but try to the best of your ability. Um, get it submitted to me by Friday, and then um, once I grade it, you can always go back and fix things and uh, resubmit it once we go over this together on Monday um, or Tuesday for some of my classes. Um, so this is just a quick video of a summary of the periodic trends for you. In case last class you, um, with the Edpuzzle video, with that tutor, um, didn't write down everything, uh, you'll want these periodic trends as you go through and complete the Castle Learning and the worksheet that I have for you. So make sure to fill in your notes on any of this stuff that you're missing. I'm going to touch on the major trends that we need to know. Um, I know you've heard a little bit about electron affinity. We don't really need to go over that. Um, I will touch on it when I'm back next week, but my main focus is on atomic radius, electronegativity, ionization energy, and then metal um, versus non-metal character. And we'll also kind of go over together ionic radius as well. That one, as you saw in the video yesterday and the day before, is a little tricky because obviously metals lose electrons and non-metals gain electrons. So you just kind of have to figure out, um, based on the atomic radius of the actual atom versus its ionic radius, that trend. Um, so that one is not set in stone trend of increasing one way and decreasing the other way like the other ones are that we're going to go over right now. So atomic radius, just to recap, is the distance from the nucleus to an atom's valence electrons. As you go across the period from left to right, so it'll be from left to right here, the size decreases. And then as you go down a group, so top to bottom, it increases. And I had shown you this picture um, in the first slideshow when I went over the uh, vocab words. And this does a really good job of showing you that trend with the size of the spheres that they have in this image. So as you go across the period, you're going to see that the atomic radius clearly decreases. So where I like to pick... Um, period two to really go over the trend. So if we take a look at period two, going from lithium to neon, we can see a clear decrease there. Then if we will look at group one for the going down a group, as we go from hydrogen to cesium, we can see a clear increase in size there. And I noticed they're missing uh, francium. I think in this picture, they're leaving out that last period seven there because a lot of the elements at the bottom are man-made. But if we were to have francium in this picture, it would be even bigger. So going down a group, we see a clear increase. So you want to make sure you have that noted in your notes. So across period, it decreases. Down a group, it increases. Electronegativity is an atom's ability to attract electrons from another atom in a chemical bond. So as we go across the period, we'll see it's a clear increase. And electronegativity is going towards fluorine. Everything is going, the whole trend is towards fluorine. Um, fluorine having the highest electronegativity of four. And then you can clearly see as we go down a group, um, so, for instance, our first group from hydrogen to cesium again, um, it's a clear decrease there. So, across the period, it will increase as we go more towards fluorine, and then down a group, it's going to decrease as we go towards francium. Um, you will notice, just like everything in chemistry, uh, there are some exceptions as we go across the period. There is, and you may have seen this in the web quest that you did the other day uh, when you graphed these values. There sometimes is like a slight increase and then a decrease. So the best group to look at for the trends is, I'm sorry, period to look at is period two. This group from lithium to fluorine and neon. 
And then the best group to look at is typically group one or two to give us the trends going down a group. So across the period here, we increase, down a group, we decrease for electronegativity. Ionization energy, we're going to see the same trend as electronegativity, so it's easy to remember. Um, and just as a reminder, or ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. The value you have in your reference table on table S is for the first ionization energy, so taking away the first valence electron. So just like electronegativity, as we go across the period, if we are looking at period two, we see a general increase. We do see a little bit oxygen is a little lower than nitrogen, but for the most part, we see a nice increase going across the period. And then down a group, uh, if we look at hydrogen through francium, we see a nice little decrease there. And that would make sense because as we go down a group, the atomic radius goes up and um, the valence electrons are further from the nucleus. So there's less of an attraction going on as we go down a group as atomic radius is increasing. So you will notice between electronegativity and ionization energy, those two trends are the exact opposite of atomic radius. And that makes sense because all of these trends stem from atomic radius, the size, because that directly affects the attraction that a nucleus has to its electrons. So the bigger the atom, for instance, if we're looking at francium, it's huge, it's big, um, the less attraction that francium nucleus has to its own electrons. So then if we're thinking about um, electronegativity, it can barely hold on to its own electrons, let alone attracting electrons from another atom. And then if we go over to ionization energy, if it has a very low attraction to its own electrons, again, talking about francium because it's so big, um, there's going to be way less energy required to remove any of its electrons. So that, again, now if I go back to atomic radius and pick a smaller atom, like let's talk about fluorine, for instance. Fluorine is much smaller. So its nucleus is closer to its valence electrons, so it has a stronger attraction to its own valence electrons, okay? So then electronegativity, if it can attract its own electrons very well, it can then go ahead and try to attract electrons from another atom. And we also know francium is in group 17 and has seven valence electrons and is super, super close to having the configuration of a noble gas with eight valence electrons. So fluorine is really close to being a valence like, or, um, uh, sorry, a noble gas. Um, so fluorine is small. It has a very strong attraction to its own valence electrons, therefore being able to strongly attract electrons from another atom, and therefore also having a strong and very high ionization energy because it does not want to lose any of those valence electrons. It wants to gain electrons. It doesn't want to lose any. So since it has a very strong attraction, to its own valence electrons, since it's so small, it's gonna require a lot of energy to pull one of those off. So you can kind of see how um, atomic radius then sets the trend for electronegativity and ionization energy. And then lastly, we have metallic character versus non-metallic character. This, honestly, is just whether we have a metal or a non-metal. So if we're talking about non-metals, we are looking at, for the most part, fluorine. So everything going towards fluorine is going to be more non-metallic. And then francium will be our most reactive metal, which you saw in the video on the first day of this unit. And if you don't remember, go back to that um, with the alkali metals and their reactivity with water. Francium would be predicted to be the most reactive with water. So francium down here in the bottom left is going to be our biggest and most reactive metal. And then up here, top right, fluorine is going to be our most reactive non-metal. So we have two opposite sides of the periodic table. So anything closer to fluorine, so going across the period, we get more non-metallic and less metallic. And then going down a group, we get more metallic and less non-metallic. So going towards fluorine, we're going to have more of a non-metallic character. And then going towards francium at the bottom here, we're going to have more of a metallic character. So make sure you have that written down in your notes as well. You're going to really need that for the castle learning and for the worksheet that I have for you. Um, for the castle learning and for the worksheet, to be honest, too, if you're not sure, ionization energy, electronegativity, and atomic radius values are on table S. So you can double check. 
um, the values there and compare them whether one's higher or lower. Metallic character and non-metallic character are not, but just take a look at the elements you're comparing, which ones are closer to fluorine if we're looking for non-metallic character, and which ones are closer to francium if we're looking for metallic character uh, trends there. Okay, so try your best on those. The Castle Learning, as always, has the option of retaking it three times, and I will accept uh, retakes on each question as full credit. And then when you are all set with that, I would like you to give the worksheet I have for you a, a go, a try, go, whatever. <laughs> um, and I will be grading that in the Castle Learning. The worksheet, though, I know, obviously, you don't know as you're going, whether you're right or wrong. You're more than welcome to work together on both the Castle Learning and the worksheet. Um, the worksheet, like I said, is pretty lengthy. If you don't finish, um, you will have some time in the following class to work on that before you kind of catch up on other work. I do apologize, and I'll put this in classroom as well, but uh, I realized I was going to grade your electron arrangement slabs this week, um, but I left a lot of them at school um, the, with people who did the second data table with the arrows on a separate sheet of paper, so you won't be able to catch up on that, but I will give you time at some point next week to catch up on it. Um, so good luck. I miss all of you, and I will see you on Monday. Thank you.